We have some pretty big news out of Vancouver tonight. It looks like young defenseman Ollie Ulevi's time in Vancouver will be coming to an end. He's likely going to be traded or placed on waivers. We'll discuss the situation coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have reports tonight from Vancouver Media, including athletic writers Rick Dollywall and Thomas Drance, indicating that it looks like the Canucks are trying to trade young defenseman Ollie Ulevi. If that does not come to be and they can't find the right deal, then they very well could place him on waivers tomorrow because tomorrow will be the last day for waivers since rosters need to be set and finalized by 5 o'clock Eastern time on Monday. So by that point, of course, that's the last day before the regular season starts. So NHL teams need to have their final rosters to start the year in place. They need to be cap compliant, etc. So we're going to probably see a decent amount of activity and posturing here in the next day as teams kind of make those final decisions on roster cuts, who goes on waivers. We could even see a small flurry of trades. I wouldn't think anything too substantial but guys like you, Levy, uh, and other players that are still in that prospect category, but are kind of, you know, three, four years in, they need waivers, and teams don't want to lose them for nothing. So we could, you know, maybe see some minor deals take place. Wouldn't be shocking. It'd be all you, Levy, could end up being one of them. But I mean, obviously, with the Vancouver Canucks right now, uh, he's looking like he's kind of like that eighth, ninth defenseman. I mean, essentially, since Quinn Hughes is signed to come back, uh, he hasn't been skating with the main group. He hasn't made any appearances uh, recently in their preseason action. And it just looks like uh, they've kind of come to the point where they're like, okay, he's just not in our future plans any longer. Uh, at this point, all of you levy, you know, he was drafted with a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of potential. He was drafted with a lot of expectations, mainly because he was taken so high. He was a first-round pick in 2016, number five overall. And you know, when you're coming into draft behind players like Austin Matthews and Patrick Laine, Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, you know, and then he goes up number five to Vancouver, that's some pretty high expectations. I mean, there were some that were critical of the pick right away, some that became more critical of the pick later on. I mean, they had an opportunity to draft a guy like Matthew Kachuk, I uh, didn't do it. Uh, they took Ulevi instead. They had a chance to take a guy like Clayton Keller, Charlie McAvoy, uh, and others that, you know, ultimately they all pass on those guys to take him. So when you do that, that puts a lot of pressure on the kid to turn out to be a good player. After being drafted in the first round in 2016, uh, he went back and played another year with the London Knights, which is where he had come over to North America to play in the Canadian Junior Hockey. Had a decent year. Next year, he uh, they thought the best plan for him was to go back and play in his native country, so he played over in Finland. Uh, and then from there, uh, he came back to North America, spent uh, two years solid in the minors, did battle some injuries during that time as well. That's not help matters as well. His ability to stay healthy has been a problem. Um, and then last year, he finally got a chance to play a little bit more at the NHL level, get into 23 games, put up three points. Wasn't like a situation where he was, you know, really impressing people, but he was kind of looking like maybe he could stick and maybe be a regular. But the Canucks really have made a lot of changes this offseason. Uh, they brought in uh, some new bodies. Um, and at this point, he's like he's fallen down the depth chart here yet again. Now, I know there was earlier into the training camp uh, period, there was a point when they were doing like the back skates and he was uh, on the ice, barreled over. Like, it, you know what? At the end of the day, I guess you can't really put too much emphasis on that. But I know listening to comments from Travis Green, it just didn't sound good. He certainly wasn't doing himself any favors. That much is for certain. So I don't know if his conditioning is really playing a role here. Is this is just overall ability to stick and find a spot in the lineup. I mean, they have Quinn Hughes. They have Oliver Ekman Larson now. Uh, they obviously have Tucker Pullman, who they signed as well. Uh, and then, of course, besides... Those guys, you still got Tyler Myers, you get Jack Rathbone, you got Bradley Hunt, who they brought in. Um, you know, there's a lot of players there, including Luke Shen, came back uh, after a couple of years in Tampa. And it, like I said, he's probably being considered like that number eight, number nine spot. And it just doesn't really make sense for them to keep him around. He does need waivers now to go to the minors. So it's not that simple anymore just to send them down. 
So that's what happens when players get out of their ELCs, get further along in the process. They're not waivers exempt anymore. And you have to make those tough decisions. He's not the only player around the NHL right now that falls into that category. There's a few others around other NHL rosters that have not been sent down because they need waivers and they're concerned about losing them. I mean, you look to like uh, Kiefer Bellows with the New York Islanders, prime example. Uh, Adam Brooks in Toronto. Brooks looks like he might be like the 13th, 14th forward at this point, even though he's had a decent camp. But now that we saw the Leafs end up with the Ilya McKayev getting hurt tonight, that could change things there. But before this game, uh, tonight between Ottawa and Toronto, looked like Brooks might have to go on waivers tomorrow too. Like it's just, that's, a, that's a, the time of year. You see it a lot. And you have to either trade some players or take the chance on waivers that you don't want to just because of your limitations of how many players you can carry, the salary cap, etc. So we'll see. But I mean, I'll give you, we'll show you a quick excerpt here from the athletic article that Drance and Dollywall put out earlier. Uh, like I said, this is the telling part here. Of course, since the athletic is a paid subscription, I'm not going to show you a whole lot. Just going to give you a little snippet. Uh, but essentially, uh, they write here that since it's become apparent that all of you love it, is not in their future plans at the NHL level that a trade is inevitable. And if not, he very well could likely go on waivers tomorrow afternoon and it could end his time in Vancouver that they feel the need to find a fresh start for him somewhere else. So, I mean, if he if he does go on waivers and they can't find a trade and nobody takes him, that's certainly telling. That's not good for him. Uh, that means he won't get his fresh start. And at that point, they likely would assign him to Abbotsford in the American Hockey League and he can play there. But I would not think his real chances of getting a call up are all that great, barring like you know severe injury issues down the road. On top of all the other defensemen I talked about in Vancouver, you also have Travis Hamonic, who's not currently with the team, but is signed to a two-year deal. Um, and of course, he's away dealing with a personal issue, which many believe is connected to being vaccinated and all that, which we really don't know all the fine details. But at some point, he is expected to play with the Canucks. Uh, he had, did not opt out, so he's with the team. He's signed. So they're trying to sort that out. So they already have him in the mix there too. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's unfortunate this prospect and this pick did not work out. But it looks like they're at this point willing to kind of make that decision and cut ties here, get him a fresh start if they're able to and move forward. So we could very well see a trade with the Vancouver Canucks here in the next, uh, you know, 12 to 18 hours, like before we get to that waiver time tomorrow. Of course, they recently lost Jonah Gatchevich to waivers, who was another guy been in their system, uh, you know, like a number of years now, as long as Ulevi has. And, you know, he was close to making the team. It's not somebody they wanted to lose, but you just, you can't keep everybody. And when you get that much experience and you become a waiver, uh, non-exempt player anymore, then that's just the nature of how the hockey business works. So they don't really want to probably lose another player that's been in their system that they put all this time and effort into developing for nothing. But this article in The Athletic also references the fact that Ulevi's trade level or value right now is not very high. So if they do find a deal for him, they're probably not going to get a heck of a lot in return. If they can only get, say, a fourth or a fifth round pick, they might gamble and put them on waivers and say, you know what, it's not worth it. That That's not good enough. We'll take the chance that we'll, we'll put him on waivers. And he clears. If he clears, he can go to the minors. If he has a time to kind of, you know, you know, really kind of reprove himself, so to speak, and redeem himself and look better, He maybe he gets a call-up option, or at the very least, maybe he can showcase himself to get a better trade value later. That's a, a, you know another possibility. Or maybe the Canucks find a way to swap him with another young player that, that kind of needs that fresh start too. The only problem is, is you're not going to find those options unless the teams can keep them on the NHL rosters. Because if you make that trade where, they're, where they need waivers, they can't just send them down and try to work with them. It's not that simple. You got to keep them on the NHL roster or put them through waivers and then they're going to lose them anyway, right? So it's hard to say how all that works. Either way, his time in Vancouver appears to be extremely limited and could even end as soon as tomorrow. So we'll see how things go. So let me know your thoughts on the situation with all of you levy in Vancouver. Will the Vancouver Canucks lose another prospect to the waiver wire here uh, in the last couple of days? That's a big blow to see these guys be exited out. But like I said, unfortunately, it's part of the business when you've had them in your system for that long and have not become 
NHL regular players. So give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Will we find a trade for him? Or how is this all going to play out? We'll discuss further in that comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.